And we're live. Because Twitter says so. Hey, look at that. DD course. Yep, go take that. Uh, let's check Twitch. Twitch. That's good. Um, got Chatty going. I need a way to make Chatty like, stay up all the time. Looking good. Alright, today uh, we are going to work on eShop on Web. Last week, if, uh, if you were watching or if you just watched the previous week's video, um, I have a branch called Update Endpoint, and we worked on, at the request of some commenters, uh, some audience members, we worked on how to validate that a name was unique as part of the validation that we would do in this update endpoint. And we got all that working. Uh, we left with a couple to-dos of whether or not to use problem details uh, to discuss the, the issue as opposed to uh, model validation and saying it was a bad request. Because you could make the re argument that the request was just fine. It's not the request's fault that they happened to pick a uh, a duplicate name for something. Um, for now, though, I think I'm going to punt on that. And we're going to rip out all of the uh, duplicate checking stuff because we don't actually need that in the repo. So I'm going to remove that and just so I can get this thing merged because that was really just sort of a spike that we were doing for the stream. And then I will go and talk a little bit more about how to do this type of checking in different ways in a domain-driven design context because I spent a little bit of time on that this past week and wrote up an article on it so um, first thing since somebody's watching anyway it looks like I'm going to just rip this uh, extra stuff out of here so I'll do that I'm gonna update those details I don't think I need any of this All right we'll save that we can go to catalog item and look at its update details and really all we care about is that the name is there we could also guard that the price uh, negative for price so that's easy enough probably had a unit test for that too before we're done uh, these have similar guards this one's still raising that event which we don't need so we can get rid of that and in fact, I don't know that I'm calling this update anywhere anymore. I already did negative or zero there. Okay, I think I could get rid of this one. Let's lean on the compiler. Let's see. Hey, Zemcat, how's it going? You am always when I can. You are what? Always when you can. Look, nothing broke. I guess nothing was calling that. If nothing else, we should have a test calling update details to verify that it's implementing these checks correctly. Um, we managed to build. That's good. I don't need this anymore. So I'll get rid of that. And... Got a few more people showing up. Nice. Hi, Kabazi. Uh, let's see, I don't need this anymore either. I may come back and add the mediator stuff back in at some point, but for now we don't need it, so it's getting out of here. Code stencil, welcome. Alright, so in the web. In startup, there were some things I did here. To set up mediator. Um, wasn't it? Oh no, it was in the API startup. API startup. Mm, we added this domain events there. We added that service locator, which I don't need anymore. So we'll get rid of that. And then I'll add a couple tests, and we should be ready to do a pull request. Watch you online or replay when I miss your broadcast. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, okay, this totally built before I thought. Okay, well, so what did I call it? Update details. 
And now it takes name description price. Email doesn't have a description. Uh, I'm going to just update it to what it is before then. That works. Not using test unit price. Update. This is all update details. Okay, so I did update these things. But these are all on order. Order tests, update details. Those are all catalog item tests. Right? Test item is a catalog item. So why is this called update details on order? Catalog item tests. That's oh, just the wrong namespace. Alright, got it. That's better. Alright, test unit price. We don't update that anywhere? We have catalog item. There's no such thing as unit price. So yeah, that can go. <laughs> You're out of here. to know if negative or zero works. Those look fine. Let's make sure these run. Everything's green. Let's run all the things. Alright, goal here is just to get this thing merged because I didn't merge it after last week's stream. Excellent. I think I ripped out all the stuff that was extra that we did last week. So let's, uh, let's look at our changes. Get rid of the event, the handler, the domain events. Uh, we get rid of some other stuff too, but I guess it was on startup. Okay. Cool. Remove domain events spike code. Let's get a pull request going. So now we need to go out to eShop on web. And it should see that I just did this push. And it should let me do a pull request. So. failing instantly. That's not good. There's, there's no way you actually ran 16 minutes ago. Okay. Line 37. What's the error? No ref. Shady Niggy. How's it going, man? Every one of these things is thrown a null reference exception on the unit test. Order test. Uh, order test, update details. Didn't I change that? It's not order test anymore. Microsoft unit test application query needs catalog item tests. Right, 
Why is this build acting weird? Um, did I not push? I must not have pushed successfully. I hate that it's silent when it fails on um, Git. What are you telling me? I think you were fine. Right, let's see if we can get this thing to push. Yeah, that still shows it's outgoing. Alright. I failed to sync, apparently. Now it's synced. Good. Let's uh, clean up those usings. Commit that. Sync that. Push that. Too many buttons in there to get it to actually sync. Alright, now let's see what's going on here. Now we got a build going. And once that is done, the next step is to add a uh, Blazor WebAssembly project to this. Because the goal is to be able to consume that web API from uh, Blazor WebAssembly and build an admin page. Which has been my goal for a few weeks now. I was actually supposed to knock this out um, by the end of June. And it's mostly done in another project, but it's not all integrated yet, so. See, we got the API pretty much working now, so that's a lot of the work. Let's see, where's the actual client? There it is. Client and server. Alright, we're just waiting for this build to pass, so I can merge it. Cool, did it, alright. Let's get that done. Now we can switch back to the master branch. All right, now back to master. Pull. Uh oh, what's going on here? Why do I have merge conflicts? That's annoying. Alright, well I got rid of that. Which should be fine. And I get rid of these using statements, which should be fine. Catalog item test is what it needs to be. <laughs> okay, Visual Studio. Good job. Maybe Visual Studio is just confused. Hey Eric, how's it going? Are there any actual uh, merge conflicts in the master repo? Because for some reason this thing is telling me it's got issues. No, there shouldn't be. I mean. If there are, it's because of what I just did. <coughs> um, let's see, I cleaned it up there. All projects are up to date. Where's my... Yeah, 
So there's three conflicts. I'm already cleaning this up manually, so you should be good. Right? I don't know why this is goofed up. Right, we'll just take the room out for all these and then fix it again if we have to. I think I'm like screwing this up and putting it back to the way it was, but I'm gonna fix it right now. So, stash the changes, go back, do all that. Yeah, probably is the right thing to have done, but I already went past that. So, let's see. Let's update details. That looks right. Uh, do I still have that duplicate catalog item name? That I don't really need, but. It's okay, we'll leave it there for now. The public API has stuff I took out in startup. That looks fine. Everything looks good. Does it still build? I don't know what it thinks I had locally. Yeah, everything's fine. I wonder if Visual Studio just got confused. Since Visual Studio crashed in the middle of all that. Bip, bip, bip. Everything passes. Alright. Um, we're, we're all synced up. We're gonna go. Alright, so let's try and do some blazer work here. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea, Eric. To just reclaim. Right, in here, I want to add a new Blazor WebAssembly project, and we're going to give it some name. Actually, before we jump into that, let's let's uh, follow up on what we talked about last week. So, changing gears here for a sec. Um, last week, we went down a rabbit hole of doing validation that an update to a product would not be a, a duplicate product name. And there was a question of how to do that in a clean, domain-driven way. Um, and so I took that spike code that I just ripped out, and I put it in here so I could refer back to it. So I've got a blog post that I'll post up here uh, so anybody can see it. And this is from two days ago. And we talked about setting up this domain event static helper which we used I wish the indentation on this uh, code highlighter worked better seems to want to always just put one space at the front and that's it but it's a new blog engine I gotta continue tweaking it anyway then inside the update method we can just raise an event to say hey we're updating this this name and then we can have a validator that is just a handler for that event uh, and it can do the check here to see if there are any duplicates, and if there are, it can throw an exception. Um, and then this is just the event. It's just a DTO. So, hey, we're updating the name. And then this was what you had to add to get it to work in startup. And then this uh, was that service locator class that I stole from this other article. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so... After I wrote this, I got some feedback on Twitter about like whether this approach is good or not. Mostly the argument was this method is not being forthright about the fact that it has dependencies on other things. Um, <clears throat> it looks like a simple, almost pure function where you're just setting this name and presumably the property is going to match. 
but what's really happening is the uh, domain event is wiring up to infrastructure and doing additional work. Um, specifically this uh, call to the database to see if there's any duplicates. And the argument was that that makes this harder to test because it has these dependencies um, and harder to reason about and harder to follow. Like, if you don't know what this is doing and you're new to the project, how are you going to figure out that that's actually doing this validation work? Which is all fair, right? Domain events do have some some cognitive overload and, and they do offer some indirection. It's their benefit, that's also their curse. Um, but he, he offered some suggestions for ways he would do it. And this was uh, Camille uh, on Twitter, who has a really good uh, domain driven design sample of his own that you should check out. Um, and I will just butcher his name if I try and say it, but uh, his last name. But uh, it's from Wednesday. It's like Camille Grisbeck, maybe. Um, and so this was the, the thread that we were having. And I asked him, well, how would you do this? And he said, well, here's some options, right? We could just pass all the names that exist for products into the update method, and then it can do the work of figuring out whether or not it's a duplicate. Or we could just pass all the names that have the same name as the one we're trying to, to push, uh, or we could pass in a, a service to do it, or we could pass in a function. But basically, his most of his arguments are, you shouldn't just magically go and do this extra work. You should tell... Um, the calling code that you have this dependency so it will pass it in. Now I'm all about the uh, explicit dependencies when it comes to classes, but I don't necessarily think that you should expose the internal guts of the business logic of this update method to the client, because that's also pushing the code out of the domain. So I'm going to throw a link to this thread out here too in case anybody cares. Um, and then it's also in the GitHub repo I'm about to show you. So, um, so down here, this domain events mediator one is basically what's in the blog post that I just showed you. Um, and so it's it's the last one in this list for for no real good reason. Um, but I went through all all the other options that uh, he suggested and came up with a few of my own. So. Um, the, the easy one is we're just going to do it in a database, right? So we're going to say, I'm going to have this product. It's, it maps to some database table. I'm going to put a unique constraint on the name column. And then whenever you try and save this thing, it's going to blow up at the SQL level if, if it is not unique. That's the easiest approach. It's probably the most common approach. And it definitely works and it's, it performs well because you don't have extra database calls. Um, the only downside to it is it's kind of a cop-out, right? Like, the whole goal of this exercise is how can we enforce this rule in the domain? Um, and the database is not in the domain. The database is infrastructure. In fact, you're you're making some assumptions to say you even have a database. What if we're not actually storing the product details in a table in SQL Server? What if we're storing the product details in a bunch of markdown files on the file system? How are you going to go through all those markdown files and, and have some you know, unique constraint on their name that's in that, in that file. Not the file name itself, but uh, some property inside the file. All right. So the other way that most people would approach this is to use a service, right? And say, okay, the only way you're going to update the name is through a service, and the service will do that work of figuring out whether or not the thing's unique. And the problem with this is that your code here, like this is the client code, this is the test code, is going to say, hey, go get me a product, um, and then go get me a service, which you'll probably get from dependency injection, and then call this method on the service and pass in your entity and your new thing. Now, why do you need a service just to update the name? You know, that, that seems weird. And why do you need a service just for that, when other things, like updating the price, you can just do directly? Like, why aren't these the same interface? Um, and the problem with this is that eventually that inconsistency uh, gets to you. And so you end up saying, well, let's just move all these methods that update product onto the service. And now your service starts to get huge. And your your underlying type here just becomes nothing but properties. It's just a, a DTO, essentially, which is an anemic dis domain model. And you, you don't want that, at least not if you're trying to follow object-oriented programming. Um, the whole idea with encapsulation in object-oriented principles is 
that you're going to uh, encapsulate the behavior along with the data, right? And if the data is here, but the all the behavior lives in this other service, and it just operates on the data, then that's procedural code, right? That's not object-oriented, that's just procedural. Um, and that's fine, it's a different rate of write code, it's just why are you bothering to use C-sharp in an object-oriented programming language if you're just going to write procedural code? All right. Um, and so another option is just pass all the data to it, right? So we could say here, here's my update method. Um, send me all the other product names, right? And this works fine if you've got some unique constraint where, you know, there's maybe there's 10 products total. So we're going to say, here's the one I want to propose. Here's the 10 existing names. And then inside update name, it'll figure out whether or not there's a duplicate. But what if you have millions of product names? You probably don't want to pass millions of names in there just so you can see if this happens to be one of them. Okay. Um, another option was a filtered list. So let's let's go ahead and filter out the list and find all the names that match this name. We'll pass in our, our proposed name and all the ones that match, which could be an empty list. Um, and if there are any matching names, then we'll we'll throw our exception to say, hey, that's not allowed. Well, it seems a little weird that the calling code is now responsible for finding all the matching names. And it would be really easy for them to pass the wrong thing here, right? What if they, what if they didn't do this query right? What if they just pass an empty list of every time? Like, there's no enforcement in the domain model of this rule. We're again breaking encapsulation by letting anybody pass whatever the heck they want to us. Um, we could pass a service, so we could say, I've got this this thing that checks if stuff's unique. It's a uniqueness checker. It has a method to say validate this name is unique. And then we can implement that service here, and it can use a repository to, to find out if that thing exists, and then put that on our method, right? So now this method takes a service. That's not awful, and it still keeps the logic in our domain, because that uniqueness checker is defined as our domain. Um, the, the thing I don't like about it is that now the calling code is responsible for figuring out how to get one of these and pass it, right? So you're just kind of passing the buck. Um, you could also do it with a function. I really don't like this one uh, because now the logic's not in the domain model again. So the function version looks like this. Instead of passing in an interface, we'll just pass in a function, uh, an action of string comma product that's basically going to expect to do the same work as that interface did. Um, but the uh, the calling code could pass any function here, right? They could just pass something that does nothing, right? And um, and this code still runs, but now it's not enforcing any rules. So again, you're not putting the rules in the domain layer. Here's what the code would look like. Right? Here's, here's my private function that actually really does do the validation. Um, and I just pass that in, this is that function, uh, as an argument to update name. And so in update name, it will call this code. But again, now the client code is determining what gets called and what business logic might or might not be used. So I, don't, I don't like that either. All right, now aggregates are another pattern in DDD, and aggregates are designed to enforce constraints on um, on their children, All right? So if we say, well, these products don't live in a vacuum, right? These products belong to a catalog, or whatever we want to call the parent object. And so catalog then could be responsible for enforcing this invariant that product names be unique, and it could do that any time we're going to modify the product collection, which we can do on add, or we can do when we update the name of a product. The thing you have to be careful with aggregates is that you don't put all the logic for the whole aggregate into the aggregate root, which is what this is doing. So when you follow this approach, the reason why I'm saying it has anemic children um, is because, yes, the aggregate is supposed to be responsible for enforcing these invariants, but that doesn't mean it has to have all the logic there, right? It can delegate the actual work while still enforcing the rules itself. Um, in this case, it's just doing all the work, right? Let's imagine that this aggregate had several different types of children, all of which had several different ways they might be modified. Do we really want to put all the different ways to modify or work with all the children onto the aggregate? That's really going to break single responsibility principle. Okay, so then you can use what's called double dispatch. So on product, you can pass in catalog into update name, and then it can call a method on the parent to do the check. Another option would be to have a catalog property here, but that's not ideal for other reasons. So typically your child entities should only have an ID reference back to the parent, not uh, an actual 
navigation property back to it. Uh, downside to this is that you could pass anything for catalog, right? You could pass null, you could pass a different catalog that's not even the one that this product belongs to. Um, so it, it's not perfect, but it's it's not the worst. Um, we could do an aggregate with C sharp events, right? So just like you maybe have done with uh, WinForms or or ASP.NET Web Forms, uh, with the plus equal syntax, we can define a delegate and an event here uh, for an event handler of T. We can define T. Those those event args will be a custom set of product name change requested event args, um, which is right here. This is the custom event arg. It's just defined inside the product class now. Uh, we could put it somewhere else, but it's fine here. And then when we update the name, we call this on raise name change requested helper method. And that helper method then creates the, the handler. It doesn't create it, but it you know grabs it. Um, does nothing if it's null and otherwise calls it. Um, so when this calls this event handler, anything that has uh, subscribed to this event will get called. And so now in catalog, we want to wire up the events. We have to do this somewhere um, because like, if, if this were a real application and we were fetching catalog from the repository, it's not going to automatically wire up the events. And we can't do it in the constructor because um, it won't have had those products set at that point. Right, it's too early. So we need something after it's been constructed and after it's been populated from EF, and then we're going to wire it up. So for now, for the purposes of this demo, I just have a method to do it. Um, but in your real code, you'd need to find a place where it made sense to, to add this. Um, and so now in here, for every product that I have in my product collection, I'm going to add uh, a hook to say, hey, um, whenever that name change event fires, I want you to call my validation uh, method. Right, and so this works. All, all these things work. They all pass their tests. All right. Um, you can also use an aggregate with mediator events. And so this one's pretty clean. Right, you've got catalog here. Uh, and catalog inside of catalog has this handler it defines. And it's going to do the, the validation check here. And then if you look at product, it looks just like our other product one that I started with, so it just calls this raise thing. So it doesn't look any different whether it's got a catalog involved or not from the product's perspective. The The nice thing, though, is if you're using that aggregate, it gives you a, a logical place to put that um, that validation check. And then we're, that brings us back to this one I started with, <coughs> which is just that you don't have an aggregate. Um, you've got a product, and you know you, when it gets updated, you want to change this. Now, the, the downside to not having an aggregate is it's easy to do the update case. It's harder to do the insert case, right? Because there's nothing, if, if I just knew up a product and set its name to whatever, you know, right here, I can set it in the constructor. There's no code that's going to fire here to verify that it's, that it's unique. Um, and so I have to do that work probably in a service or in a repository at that point. So um, of all of these options, I probably would lean toward number 10 here, the aggregate with mediator. And if we look at the add product tests, there's a, uh, a note here that says we, we don't have a good place to put this logic um, and so we just have to make a check before we save it with the repository or we have to put logic in the repository which isn't ideal either um, to do that duplicate check and so to avoid having this this code having to live somewhere outside of our domain model um, you would use an aggregate and then the aggregate becomes the place where you would put this dot logic alright so all of that um, just basically follow up from where we left off last week. And if there's any questions, I'd answer them. But if there aren't, I'm going to throw this off to the side. And uh, I should show you the repo. I have a repo for this. So over here, it's uh, github.com or Dallas slash ddd. No duplicates there. So I'll throw this in the chat. Um, boom. All right, so there you go. And look, Stream Elements is talking about DDD fundamentals. Cool. Um, now let's close that and let's look at adding WebAssembly. Um, it's just a client. My question here is what to call this thing. So we're going to add a new project. 
And we're going to say this is Blazor app. Blazor app. Blazor I want it to be Blazor WebAssembly. Blazor. Do I pick it after? I must pick it after. I don't want to do the wrong thing. But let's try this. Blazor app. Hmm. After you choose the last. Thanks, Shady. And then this is going to be eShop on web. There. Source. Select folder. And what we call this thing. Blazor admin client. Sounds good. Next. There we go. Thank you. Um, what should I use for auth? It's going to need auth, but I've already hooked up my own. Um, we'll leave off out of there for now. Alright, so we have Blazor WebAssembly. There's been a core hosted. Will we use JWT? Yes, we, I already have that wired up. So in the API, it already supports that. And the API will issue the token. So I need some code in, in here to get that. Um... Do I care if it's ASP.NET Core hosted? I think I want that. Um, let's try it. Let's create that. And we're going to want to jump into a new branch. Call it uh, Blazor something. Let's call it Blazor. And Blazor admin. Oh, it added a server for us. Interesting. I probably didn't want to name it client then, did I? I guess I should have called it Blazor admin. I didn't think it was going to add two projects. Blazor admin dot client and Blazor admin dot server. Okay, that must have been because I checked the ASP.NET hosted. I wonder what it would have done if I hadn't. Right, if I make this my startup project, then what happens? It blows up because of my renaming. Might be better to just restart. Failed, failed, failed. Alright, where's app? You should be fine. Blazer admin. Oh, it's this one. Okay. Non hosted is client only. Sean, yeah. Okay, maybe that's what I want, actually. Let's undo this. Um, let's go back to my changes and just roll this back. We'll try non hosted. So we'll go here, go changes. And what can I do to get rid of all this? Undo. Yes. All right. We're going to call it just Blazor Admin, and we're going to say it's not hosted. Kamazi, that's a good question. Um, probably the right thing to do since I have that uh, get away or get result in that other code that I was showing. Um, basically, you need something like that, either a wait or a get away or get result. Well, this is being slow. Um, anytime you're going from sync to async, right? And I did some research, and the difference, the main difference between the two is if you do get away or get result, you don't get an aggregate exception wrapped around the exception, um, which is nice. Now, you could still have other issues. Why is this not working? I want you to 
undo all these changes. Pretty sure I already told you to do that. Control A. Hmm. Alright, fine. Let's just do this from the command line. So. Well, it's not there. Where'd it go? PowerShell. Um, why does Visual Studio think I have a bunch of stuff? There's nothing here. Uh, git reset dash dash hard origin master. That still didn't get rid of. I can't get rid of that. Alright. Um, source. No, the permission denied for me to even delete it. Alright. That's annoying. Well, let's just try and add the project again anyway. So we're going to add a new project. We're going to add a Blazor app. We're going to put it in the right place. eShop on web, source. We're going to call it Blazor admin. Try this again. We're going to not host it on ASP.NET Core. And see if anybody's helping me out here. So you're thinking I need to just delete the untracked files. That probably makes sense. Um, I will try that once I get back into there. This looks fine to create this. Let's go back to here. Like I actually tried to delete it from here and it failed. So something's holding on to it. And I can go track down what, but I don't really care. Um, and then here, that's Blazor Admin. That's Blazor Admin Client. That guy, we're thinking we can delete. And there we go. Alright, cool. It's still here. I don't know why. And it still won't let us delete it. But alright, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, so now we have Blazor Admin, uh, which has some data. We can set this as a startup project, I think, and run it. And we get hello world, and we get a counter, and things look great. Alright, cool. So, we want to connect this now to our API. So I also want to run this public API somewhere. Uh, and since we have PowerShell up, let's just use that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now we're listening on 5099, and we can go into our fetch data here, and fetch data wants to show date and temperature, let's change that to be something like ID and name, and then instead of getting forecasts, we get products. And we're going to have a product.id. And we're going to have a product.name. I think they're actually catalog items, though, aren't they? So. Find catalog items. We'll fill in some other stuff here later. Alright, so then we have this array of catalog item called items and we're gonna do a catalog items await HTTP get from whatever async of 
catalog item and I need this to be my localhost endpoint here and that then has to be the right endpoint of slash API slash catalog items maybe uh, and then we need to have that catalog item guy which can just be here and really it just needs an int ID and a string name Right. Thanks for the follow trait. Okay, so it doesn't like that I'm running uh, the API over here in this other browser. So let me try that again. Build. Build succeeded. All right, let me rerun the API. Let's see if we can hit the API. So. Uh, yeah, clean architecture and DDD for the win. Um, Alright, localhost 5099, let's hit that in the browser and see if we can do some swagger with that. Not there. You are so there. You're running right now. Alright, look at this. It says now listening on localhost copy paste it All right. protocol error hmm. All right, that worked I guess I just don't have something wired up for the root page okay uh, that's annoying but that's fine okay so I can do a get on catalog items try it out. This is just API catalog items and if we execute it as is it blows up because we have to specify a page size. I should really fix that so it's got a default. Do I have a slash endpoint? No I don't. It's just an API. Um, slash is supposed to redirect to swagger but I guess I don't have that working right. Okay so excuse me. Um, I need that URL right? We'll fix the paging presently, but for now, we're going to pass that in just as is. Um, and if we look at the structure, we got ID, name, description, and price. So sure, let's grab those. Right, so we get description, we get price, this can be a decimal. And then this can be at item dot description. And this can be at name of catalog item dot description. And this can be at name of catalog item dot price. Like that. All right. Is Regix live on the radar for today? I don't think so, because um, I don't have a deadline for that one. So that's why it's been on the back burner for so many years. Um, but I really need to get this stuff done. There are some issues and things being discussed on it that maybe I'll spend a few minutes on here. Um, and we'll see if we can get something working here with us pretty quickly my confidence in my ability to do blazer stuff is low. Unhandled error occurred. Okay, good. Tell me what it is. Is it in the console? It is. Access from origin was blocked by cores policy. Hey, I know how to fix that. Um, now you're both local hosts, aren't you? So I should at least be able to hit you from there. Alright, so we need to set up cores policy cross origin request that should be specified here yeah I do wish that this was not an issue um, I'm gonna go look up how to do that 
configure cores ASP.NET Core API. Enable those things. Configure services, add cores, and then use cores. All right, good enough. My allow specific origins. That's just a policy name. All right. Preceding code makes this policy, specifies that policy, adds it with a lambda expression. I really want to just allow anything from localhost. Can I do that with origins at localhost? Well, yeah, yeah, shady new. Yeah, I could do that, but I want this to not be a total uh, security problem since it's going to go into the reference application. Um, I'd rather be a little bit careful about what I add. So let's do. Let's see, with endpoint routing, I need endpoint routing. Let's try this one. Endpoints. Am I using endpoint routing in the API? I should be, because it's new. There, doing that. So this should be what I want, right? Add cores, right up before I add controllers, right there. Say builder with origins, use cores, builder, builder. And then I can say um, dot allow, where's my dot go? Builder, go here, builder dot allow uh, any method, that's okay. Line origin, line image, line image. I think I do want to allow any header for now. We'll fix that in a minute. But this could just be local host right there. And I don't know. Uh, HTTPS local host. We'll try that. Alright, so name equals uh, cores policy we're going to need that later All right, so after routing I'm going to say use cores so here's this And then do I need that named thing? Like he uses it here, it says require cores. Um, hey Shady, when you say we need to put the URL for the client, do I need something more specific than just localhost? Do I have to specify the port? I guess we'll find out soon enough. You need the URL and the port? Oh, you guys are gonna have to fight. W says you need it, Shady says you don't. But Shady was in the allow anything camp too, so let's find out. I got into trouble earlier this week. All right, I'm going to go with the recentness uh, argument. You can always uh, in reinforce your argument when you say, oh, but it just happened to me just this week, just yesterday. All right, um, so I'm mapping controllers here. Is that where I would say require cores? Because that's not an endpoint. Or do I need to, like, am I done, or do I need to do anything else? Use cores, map controllers, right, it doesn't bother to do it there. With methods, right. well, let's see, what port am I running my client on? Is it still running? Blazor admin is running 44319. Um, my other stuff is running... Okay, so 44319 is what I want, right? So I would come up here and I would say this... 319... Um, Appetite use cores, cores policy. Okay, that's helpful. So Appetite use cores here. 
And if someone were smart, he'd make that a constant. So, sure. Thanks for the follow, Lucian. The name gives you the ability to do what Noved suggests. You can use app to apply to right. Cool. Okay. So this should be enough. Let's find out. Uh, we're gonna kill the API over here. We're gonna run the client there. We're gonna start the API again. API is running and fetch data. Boom. JSON value cannot be converted to catalog item. Okay. That's, that's progress. We got past cores. Yay. Um, in fact, that's such progress. That's like time to commit progress. So let's do a commit real quick while we figure this out. Uh, so we'll come over here. We're going to say added blazer client configured public api cores to allow traffic from client and commit that sync that on blazer push cool all right let's figure out what went wrong so um what did you get I guess I should rerun, rerun this, and then watch the network tab. Let's see what you're getting back. So you're running. We're gonna reload that. Let's see, fetch data goes and hits that right there, and gets back a response of that. Gets a catalog items collection. Uh huh. With a page count. Yeah, so it can't just serialize that into a thing. It's got to have... Got it. Got it. All right, so because we were smart with our uh, data that we're sending back, smart in quotes, um, we can't just say it's a catalog item. We have to say that this is actually some sort of catalog item response or whatever. So it's public class paged catalog item result which has a list of catalog item catalog items um, I guess we'll make that a property one of those and then it also had what else it's that and then it had a page count um, this should be public Result, I'm so result. That should be public. It's result spelled correctly right there. Page kind of like item result. There becomes that. All right, and I still have this private catalog item, so um, that becomes dot catalog items, right? Await this whole thing like that. Oh, it shouldn't be an array anymore. Okay, await that thing dot catalog items. Bam. Okay, so why are you not happy? Uh, okay, dot two array. No. Yes. There. Now you're happy. I could have made this a list. Would have done the same thing. All right, build that. And you're still running. Kill. Nope, nope, kill that. 
build succeeded. Run that. Run that. Turn on network tools right from the start and fetch data. Ooh, look at that. We have Blazor working. Sweet. <coughs> um, eventually I'm going to want paging to work. But uh, that's pretty sweet that that actually worked. Alright. Let's go see if we can clean that up a little bit. Um, client pages. Hmm. Alright, we're going to need that catalog item in multiple places. So it probably doesn't want to live right here. I don't need the counter or the index anymore. Although the index... Right, that's nothing. So that can go away. Um, actually, this thing should be the index, right? Because I want to just launch right to that. Counter can go away. And we need to check out the layout. Nav menu is going to be just home, I guess. We'll keep the nav layout, but I don't think we need the counter or the fetch data. Right? Um, survey prompt. I don't need that. No surveys. Okay, let's see if we can build this now. Question, I'm interested in to join DevBetter, surprised to see the cost, is that just coaching, or does it cost just to join the Discord group? Um, that's what it is, it's the, the Discord group is, and the, and the meetings are the, that's the whole thing. So, yeah, it's not free, but it's, it's meant to be, uh, self-selecting for folks that want to take it seriously and put some effort into it. So that's the, the reasoning behind it. Um, for free stuff, I do this. I do lots of uh, free stuff too. So if you need uh, access to me for free, just ping me on Twitter or here. But when I'm busy, um, I don't have time for free necessarily, but I make time for the folks that are in dev better. So it's way cheaper than my hourly rates for clients, but it's more expensive than free. Um, and it's meeting the need for some people at least. And I do user group talks. Thanks, Sean. Um, Tailwind. Good idea, company. Where do you see Tailwind? Where at? Good idea. Where at? The classes are exactly the same. I don't know which classes you're referring to. Um, in Blazor Admin? Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. You're just talking about the CSS stuff. Got it. No worries. I just was trying to figure out what you're talking about. And you said class, and I'm a C-sharp guy. I'm like, the classes? The C-sharp classes? But no. All right. Um, I think I don't need anything else to make this work, right? So I need the service to be running again. And now, theoretically, my home page should show me my data, which is ultimately what I want. Um, no. We fail. All right. Why do we fail? Because index.razor, what was special about you? This right there, that was special about you. All right, let's try that again. Um, do I have to kill this every time? Hmm. 
Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't have to. There we go. There we go. There we go. Sweet. All right. We got that working again. Um, so now that's our main index page. It is our. Uh, what should we do? Manage product catalog. Um, and we're going to make this for now just a bigger page size to kind of cheat. Um, and let's see if that lets us see all our products. We have like 12. Yep. All right, that's cool. Manage project catalog, Blazor admin. This should be branded something else. Uh, layout. Um, where are you getting that from? Where's that at? Blazor admin. Nav menu? It must be a nav menu. Nav menu. Why do I not see it? Right there. Alright. This is going to say eShop on web admin. And eventually I might want to try and style it to look more like eShop. There we go, eShop on Web Admin. I can even put the logo in there at some point. Um, but this is all good. Now, let me pull up the code that I'm trying to emulate. There is a, a project called eShop on Blazor already, and it uses Blazor Server. Um, It's been too long since I've opened it. eShop on Blazor. There it is. And wait for it. Here we go. Um, yeah, let's just run this. So this is what I'm trying to build. And my end goal is to build this on uh, eShop for WebAssembly, sorry, Blazor for WebAssembly, and then host this inside of the eShop on web. So this is using Blazor server, um, but it works, right? You can come in here, you can edit this, you can add some stuff here, you can save it, and there, it just added that. Uh, so I want to be able to display the image, and I don't care about the stock stuff, but I probably want to display the picture name as well. I'm not too sure about their layout here. It looks weird. And we'll want these action links also. So I'm going to hang on to this code. In fact, I'm going to steal some of this code. So here's their index.razor. Um, and where's my code? My index.razor looks like this. And so they've got. Uh, we're going to have to add authorization at some point. That'll be necessary. Um, so here I'm looking at what they, what they have. They've got this attribute for authorization. Again, remember this is running server-side Blazor, so that's a different animal. And then if they're authorized, then they offer the create new link. Um, but otherwise they show all these things. And interestingly, even if you're not authorized, they show you these edit buttons. So. That seems like a bug. I would probably hide those if you're not authorized. Um, but anyway, let's see. For thumbnails, they just stole them and put them in the pics folder. I'm going to need to get them from the eShop on web, I think. So, Mr. Villas says, seems like Blazor Server is getting pushed to the side by Blazor WebAssembly. When should you use Server versus WebAssembly? Excellent question. Um, WebAssembly is is going to run in the browser, and it's going to give you more of a uh, single-page application feel. Um, thanks for the follow, Gabriel. So I want to use WebAssembly most of the time when I want a rich client experience. Um, and it's just going to load the app 
in in the user's device, whether it's a browser or whether it's their phone or whatever, um, and then it's going to communicate with the server from that point forward only using web APIs, just like you would with Angular or React or some other JavaScript SPA framework. Um, why would you use web or why would you use Blazor Server? Uh, would be if you've got stuff that you don't want to expose to the client, or you've got things that you want to have um, work well for SEO. Although you can do some stuff uh, with Blazor WebAssembly as well. Um, like we're talking, Shady Nagy is helping me work on Regex Live, um, and we're talking about ways to do that f so that we could have Regex Live, which is a public-facing web app, um, still use. Blazor WebAssembly, uh, even for like the homepage and stuff. I'm not 100% sold on that yet, but that's uh, one of the things we're we're looking at. Um, for me personally, I think the the really cool part of Blazor is the WebAssembly stuff, right? The Blazor server is interesting, but it's kind of like update panel for the modern day. So if you ever did like web forms with update panels that could reach back to the server update some state and then get back the, the state, the, the angle brackets that belong inside that update panel. That's how they worked. Um, and that's kind of what Blazor server is doing. It's going back to the server to get the, the changes to the state of the, the browser. And then that change set comes back down from the server through signal R, um, and updates that section. The, um, one nice benefit of that is that all the logic lives on the server. So um, if you want to keep proprietary logic uh, off of the client, then Blazor Server lets you do that. Um, Blazor Server does have more of a uh, server requirement, right? Because it requires a persistent connection to each client. So you won't be able to support as many concurrent users with Blazor Server as you probably could with Blazor WebAssembly. Because WebAssembly is disconnected, right? Unless it needs some data, which most apps need data pretty often, but um, you know, let's say there's a bunch of stuff that your app does that don't require calling back to the server for data, but do you know change the layout and change the UI and change the, what the app looks like. Um, Blazor WebAssembly can do all that right in the browser using JavaScript. Blazor Server, every time they do anything that's going to change what the app looks like, it's going to have to make a call back to the server, and the server is going to make that change. All right. Um, one nice thing about Blazor Server, just to, to continue on that for a moment, um, is that it can use Entity Framework. Now, the bad thing about that is that that's how this uh, this app is uh, implemented. So, not this one. Uh, where's the one I want? Eshop on this one. Eshop on Blazor. All right. So this Eshop on Blazor thing, if we look at like this Edit Razor guy. Uh, it takes in an iCatalog service, and then it performs the edit functionality when they hit save. And what the catalog service does, it says, hey, go find that item. Um, well, actually, when you when you click update, this is the interesting bit that I wanted to show. Let's go to definition. Go to implementation. Hmm, that one. Um, it's going to actually use... Go away. It's going to use Entity Framework. So here's this DB context for catalog context. And when you say update this item, um, it's going to do a, an actual state is modified and then DB save changes. Now you can't do that in Blazor WebAssembly because you really don't want to be trying to run Entity Framework in JavaScript in the browser trying to talk back to your database um, over a database connection string from the client. So instead, um, when we look at you know the edit page that we're going to have, it might have the same look, right? I could totally steal this this uh, HTML, but we'll call an API and the API will do it, as Shady is saying. Exactly. All right. So let's go to the index page. Let's grab the image, which we're saying can just be blank, and then it's going to be some thumbnail. Let's see what that does for us. I don't know what that class is on mine. Not that one. That one. Um, so I'm okay to have that be blank, I guess. And we'll do this. Like that. Nope, nope. Like 
that. All right, that looks good. At dollar sign pick, blah blah blah. Um, that should be item. This should be picture URI, I think. Uh, let me go back to Swagger. Swagger. And it is picture URI. So I'm going to add that to here. Now it needs a place to get that picture, and I think I can. No, I can't. Hmm. Hmm. Do I have to run that app as well? So I've got public API running. Do I have to run web 2 on the right port? Or do I copy the images into the client app, which is kind of cheating? I'm not even sure that'll work. Um, or do I provide an API that shows the images? It's still just going to have to have them be referenced from somewhere. So let's, let's start up web. All right, so that's that. Let's, all right, let me try and see if I can get all three of these apps to run at the same time in Visual Studio. I've had trouble with that in the past, but I think if I just use debug, it'll be fine. So if we come here and we say, uh, where is it? I guess it's on solution. Set startup projects. Eight raiders from Tail Learn Code have joined. Welcome. Woohoo, how's it going? All right, we're going to try and do multiple startup projects. We're going to do start Blazor admin and web and public API. Start, apply. Okay. Launch all the things. Let's see if this works. What are you guys working on at Tail Learn Code? Tony Davis says, besides SEO, server pre-rendering can improve performance for the initial page load. Yes. Um, because, what are their build errors, man? Because uh, Blazor WebAssembly requires that you drop the whole DLL, the whole set of DLLs that are necessary, the assemblies, down to the browser, um, that can take longer, especially if you're over a slower connection. So if you do a quick like pre-render page, even if it's just to show like a loading page, um, that'll give you a better perceived experience for the user. Picture file name. No, I didn't have picture file name. I called it picture URI. You were supposed to figure that out without me typing it. How about now? Alright, I'm going to F5. And, yeah. So any, anyone that was uh, on Tail Learn Code stream, what were you guys working on there? Anyone want to say? Or did you all dip already? Alright, so that's working to go to Swagger. Maybe. Good. And that's my page there. Good. And that's that. But you failed because of timing error? Why are you failing? 44339. Is that what you're hitting? Uh, I don't want this. Just down below. I want network. I want to refresh this page. Reload. It was working before, you know. Headers. Local is 5099. Okay, so I need to just change the uh, port that it's using because now we're on. Oh, come on. This one. 44339. So eventually this needs to come out of this hard coded spot here. But 44339. Bam. There we go. Alright, let's close these things. Stop. Try again. Simon Gearing, how's it going? Working on Gremlin ORM. Alright, cool. All right, so Swagger's running, Shop is running, and we can see stuff. All right. Now, the reason why I needed to do that is because for me to display these images here in Blazor WebAssembly, they need to be served from the web somewhere. 
and my catalog on eShop on Web has those images. So if we inspect one of these, it's going to tell us that it's actually at slash images slash products whatever. So go here, open this in a how do I open it? New tab. There we go. So that's my path that I want. Um, and all that I'm getting here. Let's inspect that. I just need to know what the prefix needs to be. That's not a very good inspect, is it? Let's try and open this in a new tab. Images, products, five. Images, products, five. That's so close. So it looks like I just need to give it the right port and get rid of this pix. Right? I really just want that last bit. And on the correct one, four, four, three, one, five. All right, so back over here, I want the this to be four, four, three, one, five. Without that, it should be that. All right. I don't think I can just up and reload this like that, can I? Well, not while it's debugging. Um, refresh. Yeah, because I got to rebuild it and everything, right? So let's try another launch. Um, and we'll cross our fingers and see if we get the right thing. And we got swagger, we got that. Ooh, look at that, we got images. I don't want to restore Chrome. Cool. Okay, so then I just need to probably implement that uh, thumbnail class that, that I had. Uh, which was here. If we inspect this, and it's going to tell me this ESH thumbnail is on site CSS with a max width of 120. So let's go find that and steal it. And somewhere in here, I'm going to find some CSS. I hope. Um, so main layout, no, app, no, menu, no, where's the uh, CSS in this thing, oh, it must be here, index, and index says app.css, and app.css is here, and nothing here looks like thumbnail, so I'll just throw it in here. There's some new CSS. Let's see what that does. Thanks, Shady. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Uh, that still seems as big as it was before, doesn't it? Definitely seems bigger than the other one. Inspect. Did you not find my thing? Aha, there we go, it's cached. Good, okay. Uh, that works, cool. So, is there anything else that I wanna show? What else comes back from this get? Yeah, we can add CSS specific to a component. I'm not using a component yet, but I could be. Catalog type and catalog brand. I think I'm going to want those also. Um, right now, this just returns back the IDs, which means I'll need to match those to something else. This thing lists those IDs right here as the actual things. Um, all right, so we've got a few pieces to work on. I'm going to figure out what to do first. Uh, I think I'm going to need a list of catalog item, no, catalog types, and what was the other one? Brands. Brands and types. So let's do some more APIs. 
So catalog item endpoints. Let's just create a new folder. Add a folder for catalog type endpoints. And we only really need a get, so our list. Uh, we don't really need paging, but we'll use list page as our starting point. And catalog type, type. And we'll just call this list. We'll get rid of paged. And what are we going to return back? Async endpoint. Our request is going to be really nothing. Uh, what do you take? You know, just a response. Yeah. So uh, catalog type response, I guess. All right. Um, don't need a URI composer. Might need a mapper. We'll see. So we'll get rid of that. It's going to be API catalog dash types. List catalog types. Um, same thing here. Catalog items. No, catalog types dot list. Catalog item endpoints. No, this will be catalog type endpoints and now this is catalog type response is what we're coming back with handle async with no request i'm going to create the appropriate response right here hmm i want that correlation id though on that request so i guess i guess i want to have the request also so catalog type request Fine. Um, okay. Do I need a filter? I async repository of catalog type. That's not an item repository, it's a type repository. And this is a type repository. You're not going to rename now, are you? This is kind of tedious having to change all these little things. I wonder if I should have just started from scratch. Catalog, da, 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 type response, filter. We're not going to do a filter. I don't care about the total. Uh, I don't need a spec. I really just want the items, really the types. Type repository dot list async. That's it. Uh, and then we need a catalog type DTO, I think. So you have a catalog item DTO somewhere. I'm not sure where that's defined. Response. Alright, let's see. This becomes just list. The second list is going to be a lot easier to do than this one. And this becomes list catalog item request. List catalog type types request. And that's that. That's that, and that's also that, but you know, response, okay, so you're just an empty request, and your response is going to have just a list of catalog type DTO, this is going to be catalog type endpoints, this is list page catalog types response to the correlation ID just for logging purposes catalog type DTO All right, 
where do I define that uh, DTO at? Because I need that. I guess it was right here. So I'll just copy that into this. It's just a name and an ID is all I need, I think. So this becomes catalog type. DTO in catalog type. Endpoints. Getting close. Right, so we look at list and make sure these are the right namespaces. Type endpoints. Type endpoints. Alright, why don't you see those? Because I renamed them. Alright, so the request goes right there. And the response just doesn't like. List catalog types response. Alright, because it's a page before. Getting close. Yeah, yeah. List page. No, let's just be list. Response. 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 Uh, type repository. Required formal parameter spec. All right, I need to pass it a spec. Um, that's not really what I want, though. Where are you defined? You're in core, right? You must have a way to get a list without that, though. You know, list all. That's what I want. All right. List all of the types. Response dot catalog types. Add in mapper of all those things. Don't need to mess with that or that. We just need to return. All right. So with all that, list async need a page. List, I have list all async. So that's all right. Uh, I think we're close. We're not going to add authorization for this. Because um, anybody can just grab the types. And debug. Let's see if we get it. So, auth endpoints, type endpoints. Look at that. Uh, I don't need to authorize for this one, do I? Try it out. I don't think there should be a request body. Execute. Type failed. Because we can't have a body. Right. Um, hmm. This is what I get for trying to use that request type. Alright, let's not use the request. Let's just have a response. Let's get rid of this. And there's an option when I create a response to not pass that in. And it will create one for me if I remember right. So that should work. Um, yeah, so let's debug this again. Do you think type repository should be catalog type repository? Probably for UL consistency. I'm not sure what UL is. What is UL? Underlying? Ultimate level? Unordered list? User language? What's UL? Try it out. Ubiquitous language. Oh, excellent. Boom. And we didn't map it. That's that's good. That's the that's the right error. All right. So where's my auto mapper profile? We'll map from catalog type to catalog type DTO, 
And sure, while we're here, let's go over here and let's just name this catalog type repository. Like that. Alright. Let's see if we can get to our next error. Debug start. No, no, no. There we go. Let's try again. All right, catalog types. No parameters. Execute. Yay, one, two, three, four. No, 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 no. Hmm. What's going on with that? Um, must not have the property name, I thought, so it didn't get mapped correctly. So let's go find our entity in core under entities for catalog type. And of course, its string is type, not name. Um, hmm. So my question for me now is, do I want to use type in my UI DTO or not? And I think I'm just going to map it here and say that we're going to go from type to name. Which one am I doing? Number expression of the DTO. Action is options dot map from source dot type. There we go. Shady Nagy, exactly. Change it in the mapping profile. Um, right, so let's try it again. I'm not adding. I don't know, debug. Alright, got this. Try it out. Execute. Bam, bam, bam. Got it. Okay. Now, eventually, we will probably want to cache that data, but for now, uh, we're just going to call it every time. So, let me do a quick commit, because things are a-working. So, we'll go back here, go home, go changes, and what do we do? We just added, uh, we did a few things. Um, make admin page home page, remove extra pages, add... Uh, catalog type list endpoint. That's about it. We made the images work too, but that's alright. Uh, let's sync and sync. Alright, so that's cool. Alright, so now we want to try and use that, and then we want to do the same thing for um, brand. Okay, so let's go over back into WebAssembly, and we don't need WW root. We need index to show the type. Um, I think we'll put that probably right after the image. I would think, maybe. Sure. Do I need the ID? Like, I don't even have it on a DTO yet. Um, but somewhere I need to translate from the type to the thing. And I'll do that in a helper here. So I feel like I need a mapper that says get type name from item dot type ID. Like that. And that could be at. Right. Now it doesn't exist yet, but then I can say uh, protected string get 
type name int type ID return uh, I don't know what's something we don't have pint glass so we'll return that every time for now uh, we gotta get that type ID on there so that needs to be public int type ID set and while we're at it we might as well do public int brand ID like that I think those are already coming back so that should just work except for the fact that I think they're called catalog type ID and catalog brand ID um, that's gonna be on my catalog item DTO and yes indeed it's those so we'll just copy those and paste them there make them the same all right now if we hit a five we should see everything as a pint glass even though that's not the case oop, oop. screwed that up up here uh, catalog type id Alright, so that's the endpoint. That's not what I want. And that's the store, and that's the thing, and that says you're a pint glass. Um, and it says it under ID because I didn't change the header. So this should be type. And then I need brand. Easy enough. Uh, let's close these down. Stop debugging. Get up here in the header. Let's do th. Uh, item type th brand get type name get brand name brand ID All right, let's go, let's go. Seriously, computer, what are you doing? You're not doing anything. Is there a dialogue I missed? You think there are errors, alright. But you didn't want to tell me. But there weren't. You'd think I'm running a preview version of Visual Studio with all the weird bugs I keep getting, but it's not. It's the regular one. Pint glass, blazer. Perfect. Alright, kill those. Now let's get the actual stuff we need from there. So we've already got an HTTP client. Um, let me show you the way not to do this. Alright, so we're going to say uh, private catalog types private catalog brands that and then I should probably rename this to be DTO public class catalog type that a couple of lookup tables type brand let's make sure brand didn't do something silly like name it brand oh it did 
Uh, of course it did. Um, let's find mapping profile for that. need a placeholder for brand for a moment like that it's gonna move later all right now here's our super easy web call so in get type name we'll just do that we'll say catalog types is that and we'll return catalog types dot where T dot ID equals type ID dot name. You should be lowercase. Okay. And this needs to be async. Protected async task of string. Closer. Uh, well, your catalog types, and we don't do paging. Is hot reload coming to Blazor WebAssembly? I don't know. I thought they had it at one point in the previews. Um, I haven't kept up on that. All right, you. Return, oh, uh, what should you return? Paged catalog item result. This is just really a catalog type result. Implicitly convert from catalog type to catalog types. Better. Alright. It's hot when using pre rendering in Blazor WebAssembly, says Shady Nagy. Um. I guess I should say first or default, shouldn't I? There we go. Alright, what's wrong with this code? Come on, who's paying attention? There's like 30 of you on here. This code right here. Let me scroll up and help you out. Anyone? Uh, you didn't know there'd be a quiz. All right, well, let's just run it. See if it works. There's, there's this problem here. Uh, Alright, let me get it to build first. It should be brand. Okay, now let's run it. Everything 
kind of worked. Um, I didn't like to get that a task. Uh, JF Stern's got the right answer though. Let's see what happens if I turn this on and go to network and say just those and refresh. And what is this? Catalog types, catalog types, catalog types, catalog types. It's doing an awful lot of calls. And that's because we're doing it in a loop, right? So if we come back to index, which I don't need that anymore. Here we are. Like this is my for each loop. So for each item, I want to take its ID and I want to get the type name and display it here. Um, can we do an await on this? Does that work? I wonder if that works. Let's try that. Nope, nope, it's not going to work. Hmm. 42. No, so the thing is, I don't want to put in my helper method, I don't want to be doing the... Uh, this this call right I can load that once I can load it right here in uninitialized async and then they're set right and the other nice thing about this is that this thing doesn't need to be async then it could just be a string and that fixes my other problem that it's suddenly giving me so now this catalog types gets set once at the page level when things are initialized and then from there I can just use it as data All right we're gonna do the same thing with brands Catalog brands, dot first or default, blah, 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 brand ID, it's going to be null. Um, I'm going to get better at these null coalescing operators. Can I do something like question mark dot null, question, question, none? Does that work? I think that works. I still can't do this. All right, so the trick is just don't do HTTP calls in a loop. It's just a bad idea. All right, does Visual Studio just being dumb again? Took care of that already. None of these are actual errors. I already fixed it. See? Alright. Night Peapod, what am I working on? Well, you're about to see. We are building a Blazor WebAssembly product admin page for the eShop on Web sample app. Uh, which requires some API calls look like this and so the actual page of the eShop on website that looks like this which we need running so we can get to these images and this page here that uh, sure whatever is blowing up at the moment this was just working all right what's the matter with you console Value cannot be null. So I didn't like that thing I was just trying to do. That first or default on brand. Brand name. Okay. Huh. What's wrong with this syntax I was using? I thought that was close. All right, why am I getting a value cannot be null on this? Like that should give me first or default. It's going to give me null because I have nothing in brands I'm not loading it it's an uninitialized array shouldn't this work like this should be null how does that work um I guess we'll say if let's see var brand equal that. We'll do it the verbose way that I know for sure, and then we'll clean up the syntax. Brand equals that. If brand equal null, return none, return brand dot name. Right? We need to put if not initialized, then do not display in the HTML. Um, we could do that. 
But I'm okay for it to display none. And have that be here. Let's see if this works. You haven't initialized the array. I know. So it should be first or default should return. Oh crap, I can't first or default on null. Right? That's the issue. Yeah, I was thinking that it was something, but it's not anything. Um, that's why I don't like arrays. Let's do, what am I doing, brands? Let's do list of brand, brand, catalog brands, equal new list of brands. Like, this will work the way I expect. All right, and that should do, if I wanted to, that should have what I had before should work. You're good, you're good, you're good. There is none, these are all correct. And we didn't make a zillion calls. If we look at our network and we refresh, we make a call to catalog items and a call to catalog types, which looks good. And we're gonna fix that up to do brands next. Um, just for consistency though, let's do list of catalog type there. And there, I much prefer using lists for these types of things. And I don't need a two array anymore. That should be good. All right. Correct. Perfect. Perfect. Yep, yep. Good. Good. All right. So next we need to implement the brand endpoint. Um, we could do some caching on this too, but at this point we're only making one call when they load the page, so I don't think it's too bad. Uh, so let's jump back to the server, public API. And now at this point, catalog type endpoints is really close to what we want um, for catalog brand endpoints. So this should be a lot faster than the last time we tried to do this. Kind of like brand endpoints. Um, and then we don't need you. You should be brand. Brand DTO. Let's get a catalog type endpoints and get rid of this one that we're not using anymore before we forget about it. Alright, so that one's good. So now we just need list and it's associated guys there. So this goes namespace brand and basically everywhere we see types in here, we want that to be brands. So it's there, 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 but lowercase, there, there, there. Alright, so this became lowercase and this became lowercase let's catalog brands response catalog brand dto uh what else do we have that's type catalog type should be catalog brand is there a way to match case for case that would be so awesome like like yeah i want it to match case but i want i want it to match all the variations of case also and do that for me. Like, I want it to match this case too. And fix this one also. Without having to do this separately. That would be pretty slick if that worked. Cali Brands, alright. Um, we said we weren't going to use that request, right? So, Catalog Type Endpoints doesn't need this either. And. List catalog types request. It's empty. But we do need the response, and now this is catalog brand endpoints. Types. Brands.
Alright, some good copy-paste coding, but it's not too much. We just need a namespace for this. Because we already partially implemented that. And then this, we just needed to name the file to match the class name. All right, so now we've got catalog brand endpoints with a catalog brand DTO. That's not well named. I'm going to fix that in a few places. I really wish Visual Studio had a better way to rename the file to match the type. I understand you can go the other way, but I don't go the other way. I do it this way. Mr. Kemisori, hello. Welcome. Got a decent number of people here for a Friday. There's usually like 20 different live coders going on on Fridays. Does everybody else like decide to take the day off? Or am I just the popular one because I mentioned eShop on web or Blazor or whatever I said in my description? Um, I think we're ready for this to work. Where I hit build. Cool. All right, let's uh, debug it. Surly was surprised that I had people here that had been raided. No, man, it's just me. I did. I did get a raid. Uh, a little while ago um, for like nine people so that helped I'm not gonna say I don't appreciate that all right so we want brands we haven't tested this out yet so let's just verify um, that works azure.net visual studio um, close these down these all say none still though because I didn't actually initialize it yet all right that's the one step we forgot so here we want to do the same for brands. Galog type result. So this is catalog brand result, which I have not got yet. And this should be catalog brands. And this should be catalog brands. Uh, brand, okay. And this is just catalog brand result. Just catalog brand there and there and there. Okay. Build question. I saw that question earlier. Oh, I see. That was me scrolling up. Okay. Here for the blazer. <laughs> you get to watch me stumble over the blazer because I'm not at all an expert on it. All right, let's debug this again. The reason why we're launching all three projects is so that we have the APIs running to talk to, the web server that'll host our images that we want to see, and then the actual blazer app, so which is the client app. So this is our Blazor client, and look at that, we got brands. Brands work. Sweet. Okay, so let's do another commit. Um, that is not too, too bad. So far we haven't run into, I'm going to jinx myself, but we haven't run into any showstoppers that just block me from getting stuff done, which is unusual when I'm playing with Blazor. Alright, so what have we got working? We wired up types and brands in the API and the admin list page. Sounds good. Commit that. Syncify. Let's 
Let's return to our template of what we're trying to do, which is this. Um, when we started, we didn't have anything. Now we have the name, the description, the brand, the type, the price, the picture shows. I don't need to show the picture name. We aren't doing anything with the stock stuff. That's separate. Um, and then if you're logged in, we want to show you these things. So how, how will you log in? Um, I feel like I need a login button. And then we need an authorized view. And I think the same authorized view that works here, this thing, will work in uh, Blazor WebAssembly as well. So let's steal that code. Let's go back to our code. Let's go up to our main page here. Um, this component demonstrates, yeah, it does. Uh, but let's do this. And if you're authorized, we'll show you that. And if you're not, if you're anonymous, that's not just that's just not working. Um, hmm. I probably have to import that from somewhere. Authorize view. Authorize view. Is that an import? Any plans for an MVVM version of this? No. Uh, all right. Laser web assembly authorize view. All right. Blazor. Package reference to auth. I think I need to do this, but I really want to know about that. Uh, yeah, we've got the jot and the token, Shady Knee. I already did that. So that's all there. I just need to go fetch it from the client. The server's got it all. Um, so you're thinking I need this if I don't have it already. So let's see. Blazor admin. Yeah, you don't have that. Um, let's do... Let's get the latest one. Three, one, five. I accept. I read all those things so fast. Alright. Was that all I needed? Hey, those things went away. Okay, uh, what else does the docs say I need? Add this namespace to imports. Alright, uh, imports using components auth. Let's make these alphabetical. Okay, cool. Now what? To handle authentication, implementation of a built-in or custom provider is covered in the following sections. Use this library. Authentication component. Not much here, is there? Okay, I don't have this. You're acting like that's just there, but... Uh, I don't have that. 
what would I put there? This component handles this stuff. Alright. Where is that component? When an anonymous user selects the login button or hits something with authorize, the user should be redirect to authentication login. Examples. Alright. Not holding out hope. Attaching tokens. Yeah, I'm gonna need that. That's good. I need to get the token first, though. Alright. I probably want to create my own HTTP client. And have it specify the token. That makes sense. Yeah, what I really want to know is is there a built in razor component to display stuff based on whether or not they're logged in? The answer might have to be no. So I'm not seeing it. Unless it's this. This is handy. That's where that is. Alright. So I can use these fragments in here at the appropriate location. Okay. That will be cool. So my question is, how do I determine if the user's logged in? Let's just start with that. See, Matt's going to auth. Oh, great. Ed's uh, sending me more people. Awesome. Welcome, Raiders from Ed. I guess he finished early today, huh? Raid. Identity Dev Advocates. Nice. Good to see everybody. We are hey, making good success, uh, making good progress with a uh, Razor um, client, Razor WebAssembly page that we're building for eShop on Web. Hey, Ed. Welcome. Yeah, usually it's the other way around. I guess you finished it a little bit early. Uh, I'm probably still going for a little bit. This is all WebAssembly. So today what we've done is we've added this Blazor Admin project to the eShop on Web sample app. And we actually made a lot of progress. So if we run it, um, we have to wait a while, but it's going to launch our APIs. With the with the swagger endpoint here, all right, and then there's the actual eShop on Web sample app. That's ASP.NET Core, and then this was working, but then everybody raided and it killed my demo. What did I do? Oh, you know what? I know what I did. I was in the middle of changing something. Um, yeah, hang on, hang on. Mm, this is not a thing. There's an MSAL wrapper library for Blazor. What does that do? Microsoft something auth library? Is that what that is? You were working on localization. 
All right, boom, look at that. So this works. Okay, my next step is to uh, support authorization on this uh, so you can log in through WebAssembly. And then once you're logged in, it needs to retain your JOT token and then pass that JOT token on any requests that require auth. So anyone can get to this page. I'm not going to lock this down so that people can at least see it. But then to um, be able to edit or modify this data, you have to be an admin. And so there's going to be a login here that will say, hey, here's where you authenticate. Uh, and then that should work. Now, we already have auth supported. So, for instance, if I come in here and I say I'm going to create a new catalog item, try it out. This will be one, one, new, something, whatever, 10 bucks, execute. We get this 401 error that says, hey, you're not authenticated. Right? And I can authenticate through an endpoint as well. So I can do this and say that I am actually admin at Microsoft dot com for pass at word one execute give me my token there's my token copy that go and authorize here bearer space token authorize now we can go back to this post endpoint and try again and it works All right so now we have this catalog item go 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 and then theoretically here, if we reload this, we should see this item down here at the bottom that I just added. All right? CMATSCIS, Microsoft Authentication WebAssembly MSAL. Okay, I still don't know what MSAL stands for, though. What's MSAL? Microsoft Authentication Library? Of course. Instant Core Blazor WebAssembly standalone app with Azure Active Directory. I'm not using Azure Active Directory. Is this thing useful to me if I'm not using Azure AD? Doc is here. Standalone, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. You can add the auth dialog to Swagger with this. I think I have that already. Um, here's what I've got. Let me stop this. So in public API, in startup, I have add security requirement right there. How's that different from what you're showing me? Okay, so you're saying swagger doc, security definition, jot in type scheme, description, name in type scheme, name in type scheme, bear API key, header, yeah, that's all the same. Open API security scheme, reference, security scheme, bear, OAuth2, bear, header, this is identical. I've got it. Oh, you missed it on the UI. Thanks, Ed. All right, I have, I have it, but... Uh, your shows a button you can pop up a dialogue for. Yeah, right. I think I think I have that. I'm just not using it. Um, on each endpoint, I think there's a little button, as opposed to the top level button. The top level button's nice though because it saves it. So let's look at it again. All right. So here's these little icons next to each one of these. So if I say I want to post and I hit that, it'll pop it up here. Is that what you're talking about? But if I click up here, it pops it for the for this whole session. So I usually use this top one because then I can have it for the whole session. And I might even still have it in my clipboard. Yep. And it might even still be good. Who knows? Um, yeah. 
Yep, still good. Cool. No worries, Ed. Uh, oh, not done. Okay. So, okay, CMATSCIS, your MSAL, you're saying it's not going to help me out if I'm not using Azure AD? Because I'm just using uh, ASP.NET Core Identity in a database that the eShop on Web database has. And so it's authenticating against the same uh, users that this uses. Right? So I can log in here as, as admin or as demouser, demo user, here, and log in. And now I'm logged in, but that's not Azure AD, that's all just local. Uh, so what I need is a way to have Blazor do this, right? To detect if I'm logged in or not. Um, and then also let me take that bearer token and pass it along on any calls. Um, so first let's do the token thing. Let's just hard code the token into it and see if we can get that to work. That seems like a good place to start. So let's uh, stop debugging. Where's the strongly typed client that they're using? That's here, weather forecast client. So I want to use a, I don't know what I want to call it, but I want my own client here. I'm going to put this in my Blazor admin. It's not a page. Um, not sure where to put it, actually. You got to run and get some lunch. Thanks, Ed. Thanks for the raid. I appreciate it. Have a nice weekend. Uh, for now, let's just throw this in the root, I guess. Or... I really don't know where I want this. Close all but pinned. Uh, let's see. I mean, it is shared, but it's not Razor, and it's not Pages. I guess we'll create a infrastructure folder or a network folder, and then we'll add a class there called uh, Secure Web Client, I guess. I guess. And then go here, call this secure HTTP client, really what's what I want to call it. And you go there, and you get renamed. Thanks for the follow, xcompducks. I'm not sure I got that name right. Um, hmm. So you're just going to expose every API element from here? What is this thing supposed to be doing? I thought it was going to add a header for me. Configure... Uh, here. Add the client with the base address. Alright, that might be useful. Builder, okay, in program CS, builder that services to add HTTP client of T, set the base address there. All right. Authorization message handler. Am I doing that somewhere? Where's that at? Alright, here's the authorization message handler, which is supposed to configure the HTTP client. Alright. I feel like I'm going around in circles here. Where do I get the token to attach? Right. Attach token. This message handler can be used to attach tokens to these. Tokens are acquired using this token provider service. Otherwise, you get an exception. Okay. Use either a custom one or configure this one. So, custom class looks like this. Here's my token provider. And well, I guess it just does everything else under the covers. I 
I really just want to paste in my token that I have in my clipboard and have that work. suppose I can put a task of whatever it is I need on here uh, instead of using a raw request to get catalog brand I could do a task of catalog brand result on this thing and I may as well make it a list and this can be get brands Catalog brands async and I don't need an array there, do I? Far brands equal new list of catalog brand. Thanks for following R013EX1. Alright, if our brands is a new list of brands, brands equals a weight clank at da, 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 of this needs to be that whole thing that I just had on index. Right. How's this helping? Hey, what was that before? Client dot. HP client does not have a definition for get from JSON async. Is that an extension method? What is that? Probably. Alright, now what? Can't convert from catalog brand result to a list of catalog brand. Because I need this there and there dot that. Now are you happy? Alright. No, that's not what I want. Alright, access token not available. Where you come from? Request header authorization bearer token. Thanks. Access token not available exception. Nugget package. Where is this thing? this get renamed at some point before they went live. List of brand to brand result. This should be a list of brand. 
All right. Um, let's get rid of that and just make this exception. And any exception will just do a redirect. That's fine. Except that's not a thing. Just leave that out for now. All right. So the secure HTTP client is going to get catalog brands async and your suggestion shady to say oh thanks Tony WebAssembly authentication didn't I add that already? components authorization okay well let's uh, let's look for that of course I accept Thank you. All right, cool. That worked. All right, now. Shady, you're saying request.headers.authorization, right? Where do I set that? There's no request here. Is there are default headers. So I gotta re-authenticate, so it's fine. We're not using that thing yet anyway, so let's just run. I'll get a new token, I'll see if I can get it to work. Right, hit this endpoint, try it out. Admin at Microsoft.com. Password, execute, token, copy that, and paste it in here. All right, so our default request headers are going to have the admin token. We're going to list brands. Let's see if we can shut down brands uh, here. If we look at uh, create, it has an authorize on it. Let's go to brands list and let's put an authorize on that. That's the same. Now we shouldn't be able to do it unless we're authenticated. I'm not sure I still need this. A lot of using statements I need for one thing. All right, so that looks like it works. Okay, so then to make this last thing work, I need to go back into the Blazor index page. I want to say I want to get a secure HTTP client here should work just like an HTTP client in all other ways, all other respects, except when we get down here to catalog brands, we're going to say catalog brands. Actually, this will probably just work as is without me even doing anything, but we're going to try and use HTTP dot... I did call it HTTP still, didn't I? Yeah, but it doesn't like that, because it doesn't know the namespace. Because it is not in imports.razor and it's in this weird network namespace here imports network save back here you're gonna be good you're good down here we want to see IntelliSense for get catalog brands async await that 
All right. And you'll have those. Hmm. Well, we can fix that. We're going to do two of these. And you're going to be the same as you were. And you're going to be secure. We'll fix it later. And then you're going to be secure. Bam. All right, so let's test it out. My token should last for a little while. Um, this should let me authenticate. Usually when it stops like this, because there's an error somewhere it's trying to tell me about. Maybe not. All right, good. All right, so let's see. We can test out brands. Yeah, let's see what happened here. Cannot provide a value for secure HTTP. There's no registered service for a secure HTTP client. All right, that's fair. Uh, let's go fix that before we move on. So in program CS, we added a transient for that. And that's where it's adding that base address. All right. Um, I need to do the same thing for the other. Service provider, new secure HTTP client. SP that get required service of HTTP client. Like that. I think that's what I need. It doesn't have a base address, so that's fine. I guess we won't set that. I'm hard coding the whole address anyway. So let's try that. All right, I'm gonna have to wrap it up in about five or ten minutes. So hopefully we can get this working, and then I'll call it a day for for now. All right, so we said brands now requires auth. So if we just come in here and say try and get brands execute it's going to say you're not authenticated so that works um, we also said that this should be able to get it and it is so that means it worked so HP client factory Tony asks is there support for that in blazor I think there is um, I'm just muddling through you know what the template gave me and what the docs are giving me um, but yeah I think there's an HP client factory we could use and we could set defaults and stuff on it so the, the next steps I want to take here is have some kind of login button. When you go to the login button, put in the credentials, call the uh, authenticate endpoint here, get back your token, store that token in local storage, and then pass the token on every subsequent request to the network, um, to this endpoint. And that should be it, right? Then i got to build the pages for uh, create, edit, and delete items. And then that's it. So uh, I guess I could do an item details page too. I could do that now because I've already got basically all the details here. So it's pretty close. We made good progress today. Um, let me go back to my original browser here for a second and talk about a couple unrelated things real quick and then we'll see if there's somebody we can raid and we'll wrap this up for today. So. I'm pretty happy with, with how far we got. All right, a um, couple quick things. Let's see, load. If you don't, if you're on uh, GitHub and you haven't seen this already, there's a new thing you can do for your default profile with this readme thing. Mine really doesn't have a whole lot there yet, but you can add one for yourself. If you go say, give me a new repo um, and call it the same thing as whatever you are. So like our Dallas, so if you could type right. Right, it'll give you this little green thing that says, hey, you found the secret, and you can use this to add a readme to your thing. Um, if you have different 
organizations or whatever you can add them there um, so that's that's interesting so check that out uh, is your project cyberspace.dev? No, I don't know cyberspace.dev, sorry. Um, what else do I want to tell you about? Nope, no worries. Um, that's about it. So, I think uh, I'm going to wrap it up with uh, looking for some more live coders. So we'll go to twitch.tv slash team live coders. We'll see who else is online. That's loud. Um, who's Coding Garden? I don't know Coding Garden. Coding Garden. Probably some JavaScript coder. It says they're on a break. Yeah, let's go. Ooh, I am not myself. He's probably working on something interesting. Let's try him. He's only got two people watching, so he'll appreciate it if I rate him with 100 people or whatever. Uh, let's see what he's working on first. We'll stalk him. I hate that these ads get in the way when I'm trying to just see somebody. Alright, he's working on VS Code. Do, 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 do. Auth 0 stuff. Hey, I should probably watch this so I can learn how to do auth. All right, so let's uh, let's do that. Let's go raid him. So there's my manager thing. Let's go raid. Pick a channel. I am not myself. There we go. All right, we're gonna raid him. Um, first, I'm gonna come over here so I can jump in there before that happens. Yay. All right. And I'll see you all later next week. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. Um, hopefully I'll make some more progress on uh, this Blazor stuff before next stream. See ya. Um, 22, 27, 32. See, you guys all have to go in and say hi to uh, I'm Not Myself. 36 people. Here we go.